This is not a laptop. I mean, it looks like a laptop, it feels like a laptop, and it even tastes like a laptop, but it's not. Then what is it? This is the Next Dock, and it's a portable device that is marketed to turn your phone into a usable laptop. I mean, that's a cool feature if your phone has desktop mode, so I'm sorry to all of my fellow iPhone users out there, please forgive me. Now I can acknowledge that that is a pretty cool feature and I can see it being really useful for some people, but that's not why I bought it. I got this for three other reasons. Portable KVM for working on my servers, debugging and setting up new devices, and one that I only considered when I got it in, and that's an interface to use my iPad as a full workstation. Now, before we get into each of these, let's get all the boring stuff out of the way. The specs. For $300 or $350, you can get the wired or wireless version of the Next Dock, respectively. Both are nearly identical, except the wireless one is, well, wireless, and lets you connect via Bluetooth as well as a wired connection. I got the wireless one just in case, but I don't even use it. In terms of build quality, it feels nice. Nothing special, but you definitely feel like you're getting your money's worth. You get a 13.3 inch 1080p IPS touchscreen display, a 44 watt hour battery, which let me say will last a long time because unlike a normal laptop, it doesn't have a CPU to power in here. For ports, you have two inputs, USB-C and mini HDMI. And you heard that right. Those are inputs, which is the whole magic sauce to this device, as you'll see in a bit. You also have a USB-C power delivery port, USB-C data port, 3.5 millimeter audio and a micro SD card slot. Honestly, better IO than I've seen on some actual laptops. The device comes in at 2.6 pounds, so it still feels like a laptop, albeit a slim and light one with it being only 4.9 millimeters thick. In a box, you get the device itself, an 18 watt USB-C charger, a regular USB-C cable, another USB-C cable, but with a right angle connector, a USB-C to USB-A adapter, and a mini HDMI to HDMI cable. So yeah, nothing really to complain about with these specs, but the main thing is how is it to actually use? So let's talk about that. I said one of the reasons that I wanted this device was to have an all-in-one device to set up new PCs or debug older ones. It's really convenient to be able to take your keyboard, mouse, and monitor to wherever your PC is for a quick setup. I can already feel you guys rolling your eyes saying, Brett, any real turbo nerd like yourself surely has plenty of monitors and keyboards laying around that you could use. Well, yeah, but that's not really the point. I don't wanna dedicate an entire space for setting up a PC, or if I have one, I don't wanna to have to worry about, you know, worrying if something's already plugged in or running cables or blah, 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 blah. However, the big one for me as a mediocre YouTuber is that this makes it so much easier because I can set up a PC anywhere and film it. Maybe I want to set one up in the kitchen. Maybe I want to set one up in the garage. Maybe I want to draw a nice warm bath and debug an old desktop system in there. Either way, this is an awesome device for me and I love it for this use case. Since it has a built-in battery, I only need to connect it to the desktop using the mini HDMI to HDMI cable and then USB for keyboard and touchpad support. It does also have Bluetooth, so you can get rid of half of those cables if your machine supports Bluetooth. The keyboard feels fine. I mean, it's not gonna wow you, but you aren't gonna vomit while typing up your Raid Owl fanfics. Please don't share those in the comments. Just don't. I will say that while the trackpad is convenient, this is the first thing that stood out to me as feeling underwhelming. It honestly reminded me of how trackpads felt on laptops in 2005. So it may be a good idea to use a wireless mouse if you're doing any real work with it. I will say the screen is actually pretty decent. I ran a color calibration test using my Spider X Pro and I am showing the results on the screen and while they aren't gonna wow you, I mean, remember, this is $300 for the entire setup. I'd say if you're looking to use it like me and have a nice portable debugging station, then it's awesome. If you're looking to plug in a desktop and do some gaming, then like, I don't know, they make some pretty dope portable gaming monitors now. So if you're hardcore, then maybe just go with one of those. Another awesome use case for this is using it as a portable KVM for my server rack. 
Now, this is for all my home labbers and IT admins out there. Sure, you can just install an actual KVM complete with a screen and a keyboard in your rack, but a lot of those don't support HDMI and the resolutions are pretty low. Oh, and they can be expensive as f Yes, I know, most servers don't have HDMI and for the most part, you don't need 1080p anyway. However, we know that I'm a turbo nerd and I have some Intel Nooks in my rack as well as some VMs with GPU pass-through. This thing makes it super easy to just pull up to my rack like a boss, plug the cables in and boom, I'm in. Now at the time of writing the script, I hadn't yet bought an HDMI KVM, but I actually bought one and it comes in tomorrow. So combining that with this thing sounds pretty mwah, amazing. Now all of my servers are in one spot, but I know many IT folks out there that have been looking for a device like this for a while now. I mean, this isn't your dad's IT department anymore. Stop walking around with a crash cart like some type of caveman. Imagine pulling up to your page out with this device ready to absolutely slay some of your service now tickets. I mean, sheesh. But yeah, on a serious note, I can see this thing being a useful device in a lot of IT departments. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or if you don't agree. I welcome all types of discussion down in the comments. All right, so the third use case for this was to put it in tandem with my iPad Pro to hopefully turn this ordinary tablet into a full workstation, complete with dual screens, full keyboard and mouse support, and decent I.O. And for starters, I mean, it works. I mean, I can connect my iPad with a single USB cable and boom, it detects a screen, keyboard, and trackpad, then enables center stage. Again, the trackpad really brings you down to earth as it's just not up to par with what you'd expect out of a device in 2023. Although this device is only $300, but still. So the plan here is to use the next doc to help me when I eventually do my I used only an iPad for a week video. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, and if you thought the touchscreen would work with an iPad, well, it doesn't. Initial thoughts though, it definitely helps if you wanna type up some emails, edit some spreadsheets or multitask, but the iPad as a workstation and laptop replacement just feels so clunky. Obviously, this doesn't have much to do with the next dock, but I just figured I'd give you guys a taste of what's to come when you eventually see that I use this shit for an entire week. I mentioned earlier that this is the wireless version, but unfortunately I don't have any Android devices, so I can't really test that. I'm sure that's a really cool use case for a lot of you, but for me, not really a thing. Now with all of that said, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room. This setup can be replicated with a portable monitor, battery pack, and a wireless keyboard slash trackpad combo meal for roughly half the cost. I know this. Trust me, I am a regular person just like you guys. I put my USB device in three tries at a time. So I'm all for saving money and getting the most out of your existing hardware, but I'm also not opposed to paying for convenience. And that's what this offers. The convenience of having a single device that can easily be moved around and connected to any machine to provide essentially a portable KVM. So overall, do I recommend this thing? Absolutely. As I just stated, you are paying mostly for convenience, but that's hardly a bad thing. I love this device for what it is, and it has quickly become one of my favorite tech gadgets in my entire home lab. Is it perfect though? No, I mean, the trackpad is straight cheeks, speakers are tinny, and it fails the one finger test. However, for the price and the utility you get from this thing, I can easily overlook its little flaws. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that you guys are interested in and what you'd use it for. I'll leave a link to the device down in the description for anyone who wants to check it out. All right, that is all I have for you today. Drop a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you want to see more of a bald dude talk about nerdy stuff. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my portable KVM that definitely passed the uh, one finger test. If you're still around, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.